Hey, it's Matt on Comics, and this is my overview of Alan Moore's Swamp Thing, which um, covers uh, issue 20 to, I believe it's issue 60, give me two seconds, 64, and an annual. Um, I've only just finished reading uh, the new 52 Swamp Thing, which blew my mind. Um, I believe Snyder and Paquette are working on it, and uh, I think it's changed now. But um, you can see with Yala Moore's run, um, it starts off with issue 20, and it's called Loose Ends. Is where he ties up all of the stuff that's happened in the past 20 issues into a nice little ball and finishes it really well um, and it kind of uh, continues in uh, the autopsy um, Soviet anatomy um, he I've I've read a couple of the first ones. Um, I think I read like the first trade of the original ones, which is really good. You know, shows Alec Holland as you know this um, brilliant botanist who creates this formula, uh, which hopefully will um, help plants grow fast and better and stronger, and of course is sabotaged and causes a massive explosion. He gets turned into the Human Torch in a swamp. The swamp changes him in Swamp Thing. Well, Alan Moore reboots it. The way he describes it is not that it's half man, half swamp, which was the original concept. This is more, um, he uses these worms as a brilliant, like, techno technological kind of explanation for all, where these worms, which were taught to do a maze then chopped up and fed to other worms, uh, which had never had any dealings with the maze. And of course, they ate it, and then they could do the maze. It's like um, DNA memory. And that's what Alan Moore uses as his plot tool to change this half man, half swamp thing uh, into all swamp thing, where Alec Holland died there. His body got broken down and absorbed by the plants and the plants started to create something and create it trying to build a human from um, bark and fibrous growths to try and emulate the brain, emulate the heart, the lungs and when uh, Woodrow is working on it and he's seen these these don't work, they would never work. Um, basically, Swamp Thing thought he was a vegetable who thought he was a man who was really a vegetable. And it, the way it's worded and the, the, the prose and the, ah, uh, just the, the story is just amazing. Uh, it's sophisticated writing for a comic um, and it's emotive writing as well it just makes you feel for for Alec what he's going through you know he thinks he's this man and then he realizes he's this monster all he has left is his humanity to hold on to and it's just so passionate and so right and it, although it's it it's a testament to the human condition about you know what we do is not defined by what we are, um, it's our actions which um, which define us. You know, we could, we, we could be a human and then we could be a mass murderer. You could be, you know, a monkey and live in perfect harmony with the rest of the world and never harm a single thing apart from occasional uh, fruits and berries and stuff. You know, it's... He, he, he decides to be defined by his actions, not by what he is. And in that, he reclaims his humanity and his 
attachment to people and life and that life is precious and that the way that Alan Moore describes is way better than I ever could he's a true poet um, and this book uh, the first like four issues are the deep the the lead up to that the um, conflict with Woodrow who tries to enforce his human um, avarice and want for destruction on the green and that's where these concepts come in the red the green that you see so much in the new um, 52 Swamp Thing and it is just such a pleasure to to read this and the the good thing about the new 52 Swamp Thing it doesn't disavow this backstory it basically says that because with a new 52 he is Alec Holland he is a uh, man revived by the swamp by the power of the green and from what was left where Swamp Thing was the avatar um, all that was left of him uh, in a copy a kind of golem created by the green um, but what he what he achieves is just amazing um, his humanity is just there and the best of humanities he, show, he exhibits his anger, which is, to be honest, after all he's been put through in the first 20 issues, you can kind of understand it and then come into this awful realisation that he's not who he thought he was. You know, the anger is justified. It's, it's righteous anger. Um, and it is just a wonderful book. I, I cannot sing my praises for this enough, really. Um, it's really hard to find in trade and even harder to find in singles without spending ridiculous money. Um, I was just very lucky with Area 51. They had the whole lot there. Well, I say um, 20 to 50 I managed to get with one of the annuals as well. Um, for uh, It was less than a pound each, which I was over the moon with. Absolutely out of this world. Um, where it's going for a lot more than that on eBay and such. Um, but then, of course, it's buying individual issues and it's quite a long run. It'll take a while to, to get it. So I, I recommend hunting down a trade of this. I know I've seen them going for anywhere between £5 and £10, uh, up to £20. But it's just catching at the right time. I recommend anybody picking this up if they want to read a good story with atmosphere and um humanity it's spooky and it's ah oh, it's just got so much power in it um i was speaking to marcus he's uh, the manager of um, excelsior in uh, in uh, bristol and we were talking about you know reading preacher and how it, it is like one of the best runs ever in our own opinions and he was saying about how he used to read um, Swamp Things in kind of a candlelit environment where you know you create an atmosphere and I read um, these just to, just to brush back up on them I, I think I've read like the first 15 and this time I've read the first five again just to get back into it and I read in a darkened room, just me and my computer, and that's it. And for atmosphere, a bit of bit of classical music, um, you know, something within a bit of a minor key. Um, and it was just brilliant. It it really like added an extra little depth into it, and it was just creating the mood when you're reading comics can mean such a huge difference. I didn't realise that. Um, and that that was just brilliant. So I thank Marcus for that. He's, he's a he's a very very um, smart guy. Um, yeah. So overall, with the swamp things, um, I don't believe it's worth me doing individual issues uh, or doing extended like part ones, part twos. Because I don't know enough about 
this thing to be amazingly helpful. But I will say that in my opinion, this is must have reading. Um, and I recommend anybody to pick this up. It, it's it's great. You can get a bit of superhero action in there in the, in the first couple. Um, uh, I think it happens in about the third. You get, um, you know, Superman and the Watchtower and everything. Uh, Green Arrow. Um, and yeah, it, it's it's got some real nice familiar things with that. And it just ties it together so nicely. And it makes you realise that something wasn't always apart from the DC Universe before it became like Vertigo. It, it was... Superman stuff, um, and I can't wait. I, there's one comic I will do a review on, and that's number 53. When I get it, I'm missing um, from 50, uh, sorry, 51 to uh, 60 odd. But when I get 53, I will do a review on that. It's uh, uh, where Swamp Thing goes to Gotham and takes over the city and lays down some pain on Batman. It's it's it sounds amazing. Um, but yeah, that's my review at 11 minutes. I do apologize for rambling, but I hope you like the, the stills from it. Um, the pictures are just so atmospheric and they do provide such a, a great um, uh, focal point uh, of Alan Moore's prose. It's, it's just brilliant. Um, and it's just wonderful reading. Um, please comment, subscribe, thumbs up. Let me know what you thought about um, Swamp Thing, if you've read it or if you're going to read it. Um, also, if you've read Animal Man, I'm really interested in getting on An Animal Man. Um, that's a bit wrong, but yeah, I'm uh, really interested in picking that up. Um, yeah, so let me know what you thought. Um, bye.